The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. When Mary was pregnant with Jesus, her first impulse was to visit her kinswoman Elizabeth to take Jesus out to the world. Likewise, this should be our greatest desire after receiving Jesus in word and in sacrament at Mass, to take Jesus out of the church and to share the gospel to be Eucharist to the world. Why is this important? The gospel is more than good news. It is life-changing news. This news we cannot keep to ourselves. It must be shared with everyone so that they can experience loving and life-giving communion with Christ. This is especially critical for young people who are searching for truth and not finding truth in youth, youth groups that focus on pizza and soda, icebreakers and socializing. They're not finding truth in confirmation classes that are afraid to discuss contemporary social issues like transgender ideology, racism, and why marriage is only between a man and a woman and why we go to Mass. If we are not willing to dialogue with youth and young adults on these and other important issues from the heart of our Catholic faith, then their hearts will surely turn away from the Lord and enter the gate that is wide and the way that is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, as Jesus tells us in Matthew's Gospel. The process of evangelization can only begin when we recognize and respond to the voice of the Lord calling us. For far too long, we Catholics have been filled with a spirit of apathy and embarrassment about sharing our faith. When the culture tries to force subjective truth on us, we worry about being politically correct and offending people. When our friends and loved ones challenge us about why we are Catholic, we have no idea how to answer. When the culture presents us with virtue signaling and canceling and deplatforming and safe spaces as ways to respond to difficult issues with no room for dialogue, we must act like the apostles and obey God rather than men. We must meet people where they are and witness to them. When we work with the Lord to plant the seeds of faith, the Holy Spirit, in his time and in his way, will allow that seed of faith to grow in a person's heart. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. A couple of months ago, I spoke at a high school in 
some tiny town in Iowa. Ne I've never even heard of it before. A week after my talk at the high school, I received an email from a parent. Here's part of what it said. You spoke at Bishop Garrigan High School in Algona, Iowa this past week, this is April, where my son is a ninth grader. Whatever you said has resonated. Immediately following your days at Garrigan, he started self-regulating his video game playing, which had become a source of real concern for his mother and me. Further, he's been engaged with us. It is definitely connected with your talk. It is very uncharacteristic of him. And he spoke to me about it at length. So thank you. You are making a difference in your mission. It's not my mission. It's Christ's mission that all of us have. In the gospel, Jesus tells the apostles to go out two by two and, like him, to drive out unclean spirits or demons. Today, we have the demon of alcohol and drugs. If you don't believe it, just take a look right outside here at the church. We have the unclean spirit of pornography, the demon of domestic violence, the demon of rioting, looting, and vandalism, to name a few. These unclean spirits can turn us into slaves by reducing our freedom and limiting our capacity to love. If we are to help people encounter Christ and recover their freedom, which is what evangelization is all about, we must be free ourselves. So Jesus tells his apostles that when they go out to evangelize, they should not bring many things with them. If no one received them in that place, they were to shake the dust from their feet and move on. The people in that place were obviously not yet ready for the gospel. People aren't always going to be ready for the truth because they're still searching. And until they find Jesus, they will have no peace. But you may be asking yourself, well, wait a minute, why am I called to evangelize? I mean, Jesus tells the apostles they have to evangelize, and I'm an evangelizing father, and, but what, why me? Hold on. Because we are all called to be disciples. A disciple is one who hears, who accepts, and who carries out the teachings of Jesus in their life. A disciple follows and imitates Jesus. Each of us who has been baptized has this mission and calling to actively share our experience of knowing Jesus Christ personally and then inviting others to share in his life. That's what we're called to do. And you do it so beautifully with the work you've been doing in Africa. Amazing. The lives that are being touched by, not, not you know this, because I know, not by you, by Jesus working through you. Right? And the work Sharmika's doing. And the work that Talitha's doing. The work that, that's the stuff. That's how we roll our sleeves up and get our hands dirty in the work of the Lord. That's what he's preparing his apostles to do. And that's what he's preparing all of us to do. At another talk I gave a couple of months ago, I got another email from a parent. Actually, it's from a young adult. Thank you very much for visiting and delivering two very moving, powerful, and inspirational presentations. I find your message has truly opened my heart, eyes, and soul to becoming a better person and the follower of God. Your professionalism, enthusiasm, and passion shine brightly. And many things that you mention will stick with me for as long as I live. 
So my brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus called farmers, fishermen, carpenters, and tax collectors to be evangelists. So we can't use the excuse that I'm only a housewife or a clerk or a custodian or a factory worker or a teacher. Because we have been baptized, Jesus is calling us to evangelize, to invite people to know, love, serve, and follow him. Sharing the gospel is how we participate in God's plan for salvation. That's the answer to the question, how do we honor God? How do we as human beings bless God? How do we give glory to God? Part of it is by participating in his plan of salvation by witnessing to the power of his love in us. Our hope is that those who witness and experience the evangelizing Christ in us will turn toward the Lord and open themselves deeply to him in freedom and love. St. Paul summarizes the disciples' role beautifully. Your thoughts should be wholly directed to all that is true. Live according to what you have learned and accepted, what you have heard me say and seen me do. Then will the God of peace be with you. Amen. Amen.